Savannah when she would just come up to you and just say like a whole bunch of random like today this is exactly the nonsense that I'm listening to right now so um the classroom school room is looking real full today I don't know I think I might actually have to take these down not them down but I need to move them around a little bit just so that it'll make room for some of the project that I want us to work on, but, um, dad came over, Brian's dad, my father in love, came over and he helped to hang these, and it was, it was a good time, <laughs> so he and Cameron, uh, got up and tried to hang them the best that they could, and they did a decent job. High five. <laughs> Okay, so we're hanging flags. Is that what we're doing today, Dad? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay, but we, he's saying we need to turn them around because they're no. not right. No, I didn't say that. I... So are we going to turn them around? No, we're not. <laughs> they could. And they did a decent job. Did a decent job. It's just that this space right here I'd like it to be more full right here I don't want it to be empty because for for our project we are going to be hanging even more stuff off of them so yeah I just want to even them out just a little bit divided oh, girl <laughs> girl Got our packets of seeds. Where are the other seeds? Oh, they're on my cart. <laughs> Giant Italian parsley. We've got thyme. We have chives. We're gonna try planting some cilantro. So, I always hear about and know firsthand how horribly cilantro does in the garden. Usually we're planting it in the summertime when they have it out in the stores. Problem is it always dies. And then I came across a video where, where someone was explaining that cilantro always dies because it likes cooler weather. So why would they do that to us? Why would they have us see the cilantro in the store in the summertime only to know that it's going to die? Why? Anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and try to plant some cilantro this fall season and see how it does. So we've got all of our seeds ready for Kindle to for Kindle to plant. And these are the other seeds I picked up. Um, we're pretty much just going for like all greens everywhere. Greens and herbs, because we know for sure we will use them. The bunnies 
go through tons of greens so I figured it was nicer for us to go ahead and pay $30 for some seeds to grow and feed our bunnies um, so we'll see how it goes and we're gonna clean out the garden Brian's gonna help me clean out the current garden take out our tomato stalks we do have a couple of uh, pepper plants that hadn't given us anything all summer and now they're starting to bud like crazy so we're probably gonna leave those um, but everything else we'll just kind of pull up and put a little bit of what is it called addendums amendments what do they call it when they add like goodness to the soil anyway um, we're probably gonna do that turn it a tiny tiny bit and then get some of these seeds to the ground I'm very excited about it. I love seeing Kendall go out into the garden, go out into the garden and check on what is there. So this is what we're doing for fall garden. Are you guys, do you guys do a fall garden? And if so, what do you put in it? I know that I could have done pumpkin. I could have done, um, I think we could have done more squash and things like that, but we don't really eat squash as much. And pumpkin would have just been like, for fun <laughs> so um, I just thought instead of planting a bunch of stuff that I know that we're not really going to eat I might as well just go ahead and fill all of our garden beds with greens which I know for sure we will eat or juice or give to the bunnies and so that's kind of the plan for the fall garden this time around today I think I'm going for coffee <laughs> even though I feel like I'd be nice and cozy with some warm some hot a cup of hot coffee I feel like I'd like to have some iced coffee so that's what we're going to do this morning I'll just go ahead and make my regular old iced coffee So this is the week's book stack. We've got three in this series for the Wild Robot. We've got the last map maker that goes along with our geography big block unit. And then I have the unmaking of June Pharaoh by Adrian Young and the extraordinary education of Nicholas Benedict, which <laughs> has been a couple years in the making. Just painted one hand. <laughs> I've got my feet up in my little corner and there were two more books that I needed to add to my list of um, what we're reading. Our book stack. Um, well, kind of one, but this is two and I'm excited about it. I have The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn that Cameron is going to be reading. And we're going to be using the super summary our super summary subscription um to work our way through this classic uh, but i want to get into it because i've been extremely excited about this retelling that just came out so the adventures of huckleberry finn is following the perspective of huck finn and he adventures with a runaway enslaved person named Jim and this is by Percival Everett basically a retelling of Huckleberry Finn from the perspective of the runaway enslaved person Jim or in this book it's called James so um, we're gonna be reading these two starting with Huck Finn so I am excited to get into handling classics in this way um, just really asking the question, why is a piece of literature considered a classic? Um, and how we would go about assigning for ourselves modern day classics. 
and this is what I was referring to it's it's like um, a modern day cliff notes and this has really been helping me in this season you guys as the kids are reading more and more and um, I'm not always able to or I'm often not able to keep up so um, I actually went ahead and purchased this one for the read aloud that goes along with our big block which I'll talk to you about the schedule in a second um, but I enjoyed it so much I went to go and look for some more information and found out that they actually have a subscription not a surprise but I love that for us so I went ahead and signed up for the subscription and I have every book that we're reading in our book stack um, pulled up on our account and it just is really helping me during my like planning time each day that I can sit down and run through um, the summaries. Um, they have character analysis. They have um, chapter by chapter breakdowns. They have study, I mean, essay questions. They have quotes to follow. Um, it's just really been helping me uh, kind of keep up with them as they're working their way through reading. And it's just giving me the words. Um, that I have in my mind but it helps to give me the words more quickly uh, so that we can really just continually work on literary analysis so I'm really excited to add this to our book or literature work here we are again so while they are finishing up their math for the morning I'll just go ahead and flip through these and see where I am see if we fell behind on anything if I wanted to add anything to the day creatively and such but this is where I find myself again, in my little corner. Alright, so it's about that time for me to change up the calendar from September to October, which is your girl's birthday month. So, I am choosing to be excited. I think I'm going to assign a few book notes this month. So, I'm going to put this up here on the board. A little section for our book notes. Do you guys fill in a calendar? Do you guys fill in a calendar every month? We definitely don't do it every month. Um, I kind of do it when I need to do it. It's working for me. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in October's calendar just to keep us accountable and trying not to miss too many beats. see if the bunnies can coexist so oh, no. <laughs> while we read while we read we'll see how they do in here I don't think we should read today. yes Mommy. okay then so then this we can do this after okay so let's do it after then I don't want to do it after <laughs> <laughs> we can do it after should I put it in the corner hmm Put it in the corner. In the middle. Okay, so we put some hay in there for them. And we'll see how it goes. Where were you last night? He asked. And don't tell me you came home late, because I was here and you never showed up. I swallowed my surprise. But Mutt's injured leg and criminal record kept him out of all the respectable sections of Unlum. He rarely ventured farther than the restroom room these days. up on the window just to give us a little bit of a refresher and a reminder about blocks and whisker diagrams. I just have the whole set of these, DK Help Your Kids with Math. 
I like sets like these because they're really helpful. And usually by browsing through them, I can find something that helps give me a point of reference for something to just kind of like put up was to explain and remember and all the things. So I'm just going to put this up old school style, right, Kendall? Who's that? Oh, you just did that right easily. Well, it, I never do that. It usually hurts a lot until you get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Receives a radio wave from three or more satellites. That's Gold can translate those signals into a precise location or called the Global Navigation Satellite like System. While it's great to know where things are, as geographers we want to go beyond that, which measures and analyzes how the features in space are arranged and connect to each other. Frigid continent has been one of the least mapped areas on Earth. This mapping effort is nearly impossible. So in 1997, Researchers in geography, we can also talk about socially constructed spaces or those spaces we create and give meaning to as communities, like that coffee shop or sculpture. Socially constructed space doesn't even have to be physical. The way we develop and define virtual spaces, like the fan communities we form and participate in online, is a whole subfield of geography. But let's stay in the physical realm and see how the perception of a space can change person to person or culture to culture. Relief efforts in Haiti were delayed because aid workers didn't know where to go or how to get there. Haiti went from no map to a complete map in the first crowdsourced mapping effort for humanitarian purposes. The global effort to map Haiti was such a success because it brought together those who had technology to digitize the building boundaries and roads and those who knew the significance of those boundaries and roads. With crowdsourcing, the sense of space could be complete. Since 2010, communities around the world have worked within OpenStreetMap digitizing their buildings, roads, and other features. Highlands have changed from a once widely forested area to one where deforestation has resulted in serious gashes and erosional gullies called lava. The parts of Earth where life can exist make up the biosphere. Clean up the reef by whisking away sediment that is built up over time. This is Crash Course Geography. Persons attempting to find a motive in this narrative will be prosecuted. This one handled dinner. I can't hear you. <laughs> Which I need I because I'm exhausted. So, we've got Chipotle bowls. Very exciting, very exciting stuff. Grateful for that guy. All right, your girl is exhausted. Um, I am done. Done, done? I'm done for the day. Brian made dinner, which, which thank the Lord for him. And I'm sitting here babysitting bunnies. And I need to write out any notes. Um and whatever I need to do to prep for tomorrow. But, I see Cameron is out playing guitar in the backyard. Kendall and Savannah are eating dinner before they head off to practice. Brian, what are you getting ready to do? Uh, take them to practice. They're getting ready, he's getting ready to take them to practice. And I need to finish and edit so I can upload for you guys which in this season has been somewhat therapeutic for me because the way that I'm drained from the day, <laughs> like, oh, the way that I'm drained from the day. I had something to say. I did manage to get my second hand painted, my nails painted. Can't really see the color because of the light, I guess. I had one hand painted in the morning and the other hand painted in the <laughs> In the afternoon, I talked all day about how I was going to get back to explain the schedule. And it really is quite simple. The bottom line was that we have a schedule that we've always worked through um, for the last few years. And it's very much so like a morning devotion, morning work, um, language, arts, math, history, science, that type of deal. 
Uh, but this time around, for some reason, I just really felt like um, we could stand to do a, uh, what we are calling a big block, which basically means that I established which pieces of subject matter that we needed to have like daily putting our hands and eyes on um, and practice in and then dividing the rest of those subjects um, into very concentrated focused blocks. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so basically taking out history, taking out science, taking out geography, taking out all of these other subjects and instead of having them span the whole 36 weeks, just taking what we were planning on doing for the 36 weeks and condensing it into a big block of like four to six to eight week study. Basically, we're still doing devotion and morning work and we still need to be getting in math practice every day. So they do have a math section of the morning. And then also they have Spanish. Um, Cameron goes to his class and Kendall and Savannah um, and I work on their Spanish vocabulary and Spanish skills. And then after that we have what what we're call, we, what is considered a study block where we really haven't gotten into the study block just yet because it won't really go into effect until after our first round of the big block studies because then we would have created study material that we want to put in rotation. I hope that makes some kind of sense. So we started decided to start with a geography unit. It's basically like a massive unit study. And instead of it lasting for a couple of weeks, it's going to last for six to eight weeks type of deal. Um, I do have some that are going to be smaller units and span a smaller amount of time. But uh, we are starting with one of the major ones, which is geography. So after they complete devotion, our morning work, math, and also our Spanish or foreign language um, and study time, then we move into our big block for the day. And like I said right now, it is geography. Um, and then we have a very large chunk of the day that we are doing geography studies, just really being able to focus all the way in on that subject matter um, and working our way through that for the day. So <laughs> I was really kind of, you know, I have my concerns, but mainly I'm excited about moving into it in this way. Uh, just because this is the way we used to do things. Um, and then we got away from that as they've gotten older and I needed to establish um, more uh, stricter routines um, and get them comfortable with using curricula and, you know, administering tests and all of that stuff that they need to know how to do. And after sitting with that for a couple of years, now we just really miss each other, like studying together, doing more and more things um, together and having more time to sit with subject matter. So... I am very excited about it, and I was just hoping that I'd be able to implement it and it actually, like, work. <laughs> so, so far, so good. Uh, it comes with its challenges, of course, but we're just kind of, like, working our way through those things. Um, so, again, we had our big block of the day, which was geography. I feel like the kids are able to identify the fact that subject matter is, subjects are really, like, a fluid thing. I mean, they're really so interconnected and being able to focus in on one specific subject really gives them room to see how interconnected it is. Because although we are focusing in on geography, they have been able to identify that there is history there, there is math there, there is science there, there is language arts there. It's just all of those things come together into one beautiful little area of study and having them be able to see that and us being able to discover and explore that together has just been really, really good. So yeah, this one's back. <laughs> he was out practicing his guitar skills. Um, 
so yeah that is what our schedule is looking like right now so far we're playing it by whatever light we have been given so we decided to start with geography i do know that our next big block that we're going to move into is a language arts and writing block um a uh, reading is also something we do daily as well but uh, I, I forgot to mention that earlier but as far as language arts writing and um, grammar that block I think is going to be next because we wanted to incorporate um, a writing challenge NaNoWriMo I would love to be a part of is what I'm considering right now but even if we don't choose that we just really want to get into a big block of writing and language arts <coughs> grammar so that's probably the next one we're going to head into it's not written in stone so if we decide to do history or we decide to do science I don't know but that is pretty much the plan so far I also am fine with splitting up the big block if I need to so for instance if we get to week three of geography studies or week four of geography studies and I'm saying hey I think we need to stop here move into another block and then you know add in two more weeks or three more weeks of uh, big block geography down the road then we can do that too so I feel like it still has plenty of areas um, of flexibility there that we can play with um, and we will see how it goes as long as it is showing some fruit we'll just keep on plugging along mm. and that's it that's all friends I'm tired <laughs> I'm ready to take makeup off get in the shower get some kind of warm tea and my book I'd like to read and yeah I'm done for the day okay they're gonna head off to practice this and all those things and clean up and I can just take my notes and do whatever I need to recharge for another day. Live to fight another day, friends. And that's it. So, <laughs> life is so very full of lessons. And our goal, as always, is to live and to learn. And I will see you in the next video.